Hello everybody, uh, my name is uh, Artur Latuszewski. I work as Android developer at Braintree. Um, I am a green architecture fanatic, uh, I'm a solid believer, and I am also a Kotlin fanboy. And today I will be talking about uh, Kotlin coroutine. With the, uh, and uh, I will try to answer for the question, um, is it the next step for XJava developer? Uh, some uh, agenda. Uh, now, firstly, I will talk about uh, pre Kotlin world, what we had before. Then uh, I will say something, uh, what are coroutines and uh, why we need it. Uh, then some theoretical knowledge. And next step will be a basic tutorial with some code. Then extra examples with more code. I know that everybody are developers and we love code. <laughs> and uh, next I will try to answer for the title question. And uh, in the end I will tell something about a uh, place where you can find more information and wha what you should look next. Okay, uh, what we uh, have had in pre coding world. We had uh, async tasks, which, which, which was poorly uh, 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 connected to the life cycle of uh, Android activities. And th th there was a lot of callbacks and it w the API was very uh, unfriendly. And we have also uh, threads, and this is a pure Java solution. Is uh, for hard people who love hardcore and uh, love callbacks and uh, love very low level um, things. And then uh, we had Eric's Java. It was uh, like silver bullet for every developer. Uh, underneath it was uh, uh, based on the threads also, but it g gave us. Uh, uh, very powerful API to uh, minimi minimize the callbacks. Okay, but what we, why we need something else? Cause so, if uh, Eric's Java is so silver bullet, because we are Kotliners, we love Kotlin. We want something uh, uh, what was created for Kotlin, not for Java. Uh, we deserve for something. Um, there is Eric's uh, Kotlin. Uh, but this is only extension uh, for the Eric's Java, uh, and it don't uh, use the uh, really mechanism of uh, uh, Kotlin language. Uh, so maybe we uh, we uh, should find something uh, similar to Eric's Java in Kotlin. But do we really need Eric's Java? Let's start from saying what are coroutines. Uh, coroutines allow us, allows us to write a synchronous code in a sequential way. So sequential way it's just simple code uh, like you write everywhere. Uh, this is not coroutine, but this is uh, uh, this code looks very very close to how it would uh, it look with coroutine. Uh, it will be with, if AP get data would be a, a network threading call. We would get exception, but when with coroutine, it would work. Okay, but what problems solve the coroutine? Of course, callbacks. Uh, we all hate callbacks. We know callback hell, uh, the pyramid of doom. Uh, but as I said before, Eric Java also solved some problem with callbacks. So. Eric Java, does Eric Java have some any problem? Yes, it still have callbacks. Here, uh, on next, on error, there are still callbacks. But do we have any more problems? Yes, you have this stream style. Not everybody loves the stream style, <coughs> and it's uh, very limited when you want to work with something uh, outside of the stream. and. Uh, writing uh, custom uh, operator for uh, the stream is hard it's not so easy and uh, it's and, and then you have to write some boilerplate code 
Okay, so let's start from some theoretical knowledge. Coatings. What are coatings and some deep dive inside? Conceptually, they are very lightweight threads. I thought about adding more very words because they are very, very lightweight. Uh, for example, when you run 100,000 uh, threads, you get uh, out of memory exception. And when you run 100,000 uh, 100, uh, coroutines, everything will work. Uh, so this is uh, conceptually only like, uh, like threads, but uh, it works thanks to, in, in, thanks to compiling. In compile time, it creates uh, a uh, state machine with uh, shared states and under of it it works on callbacks still <laughs> but uh, you don't see it and you have very very uh, sim uh, very friendly a api and which looks like uh, sequential code uh, thanks to that we have uh, less context switch uh, overhead uh, uh, no uh, no uh, is m less uh, work for um, uh, operating system. Uh, we have also uh, less memory overhead. You don't create uh, tr so many threads. Threads are uh, very costly and uh, coroutines are cheap. And uh, coroutines works everywhere where coroutine work works. So uh, every everywhere with uh, JVM, uh, 1.6. They are, unfortunately, there is one problem. They are experimental, but not anymore. <laughs> they were experimental, uh, but in Kotlin 1.3, they will be uh, ready. Uh, of course, they are experimental, but uh, you can use it now in production apps. Many production apps use it uh, for asynchronous, uh, asyn asynchronous communication, for example, bugs. This is one of the biggest uh, uh, financial startup. Uh, now we have uh, Kotlin 1.3 uh, milestone one. So we have to wait, I think, about a few months, maybe six months. And, uh, in, uh, and we will have uh, not experimental Kotlin coroutines. Uh, it will... Uh, you, there, there is a uh, tutorial how to move from uh, experimental to uh, production-ready, uh, stable uh, version of coroutine. It's uh, mostly you have to remove experimental from the package and everything will work. Okay, about some uh, basic concepts. Uh, in coroutine, we have a suspend fu function. This is the most important uh, Keyword. Suspend is a function modifier. Uh, it uh, allows uh, to suspend function and uh, tells the code that it can be executed later uh, without blocking the thread, without blo changing the context. Almost free, as I said before, it's uh, underneath just a state machine with callbacks. Okay, we have code in builder because they don't just, just they don't uh, appear just like that from the uh, sky. We have uh, some main builders. Uh, first, uh, launch. This is the most basic uh, coroutine builder. It's it's a uh, fire and forget. It starts uh, coroutine and uh, go with the code. It returns uh, job object. Uh, job object allows you to uh, cancel coroutine and uh, all uncode exceptions uh, made a crash. Uh, next coroutine builder is async. It's uh, for async, call, async calls. Uh, it returns um, promise that uh, it will someday, somehow, it will return object. Uh, this promise uh, is uh, called here Deferred, just because uh, promise is uh, returned in JavaScript, and this is a synonym for that word, and uh, JetBrains wanted to be uh, something, uh, have something new. 
the deferred is a um, uh, parent of the deferred is a job, so we also can uh, cancel um, this uh, this coding. And to get the uh, result from the scoring, we have to call uh, await on the deferred object, and it will provide you a um, result, or it will wait for the result if it's not uh, ready. Uh, we have to watch out for the this uh, coding builder because if we forget about await, and we have some exception inside uh, this coding. Uh, this coroutine will swallow the uh, exception, and uh, this, this is the two main uh, coroutine builders. There are some, there, there are two more with context. Uh, it allows you to uh, start some internal coroutine. Uh, it's uh, it is uh, used for changing uh, threads uh, inside this coroutine and to manage between them, between the threads. Uh, and uh, we have uh, run blocking. This, uh, this coroutine builder run, uh, runs uh, coroutine and locks current threads until the end of the execution. execution. Uh, of course, we can't use it in main thread of Android, um, but it's useful for uh, for testing. Okay, something about coding co context. We know scheduler from XJava. XJava. Here we have uh, uh, context. It works similar. We have unconfined, uh, unconfined uh, context. Just run on the current thread. Uh, we have uh, UI thread, which runs on main UI thread. Just like uh, Android main thread. Uh, in Rx Java, or um, we have a uh, common pool which uh, runs on the background thread pool. This is uh, this thread pool is uh, based on uh, f forks common pool uh, implementation. It's currently uh, default uh, default coding context. So if we we don't pass any context to the coding coding builder. It will start in a uh, common pool, but we have to be very careful with this uh, this coding context uh, because common pool have very limited size. Unfortunately, on some device with uh, which uh, with uh, which have uh, one core on on less uh, or two core or two core on less, it can it, it could be only one thread in this uh, uh, common pool. It's it provides to um, to deadlock problem. Uh, of course, it's easy to avoid by using uh, by creating our own coroutine context with uh, uh, thread pool we that what we want. Uh, but JetBrains uh, know about the problem. They they are thinking about creating some uh, I/O context, coding context, optimized for blocking call. Currently, is the top issue on uh, uh, Co Kotlinx coding GitHub. Uh, it will be some mix of uh, Eric Scheduler's new thread with I/O. Mix uh, means that uh, it will be just like uh, new thread in uh, Eric's uh, schedulers but uh, optimized like uh, I.O. and uh, probably it will be a uh, uh, default context coroutine in uh, Kotlin 1.3. Okay, talk is cheap, uh, show me the code, Paolo Kelio. <laughs> we can, uh, this is our first coroutine. We just launch coroutine uh, on the UI thread and we have coroutine. And we can <laughs> we can uh, uh, call there uh, any suspend function quite simply. Okay, how to cancel this coroutine? As I said before, launch returns job object, and we can just uh, call cancel. Uh, this is equivalent for Eric's Java disposable and dispose. 
Okay, but what uh, when we have uh, more coroutine and we want to uh, cancel them all? Uh, it's also simply just uh, we have to create some uh, parent job and pass this parent job to the all uh, coroutines that we want to cancel. Uh, this parent job will work uh, equivalent to the uh, composite disposable. What is important here? We have to uh, remember that when we uh, cancel an uh, any job, we can't uh, pass it to the any coroutine. We have to create new object of uh, of job. Okay, uh, more f more thing about cancelling. Uh, uh, coroutines. Of course, there is no magic voodoo inside of it. So when we call uh, job cancel in, uh, on this uh, on this uh, job with this coroutine, it will work forever because it don't know that it was cancelled. We have to uh, uh, we have to check is the coroutine still acti active. We have a uh, global uh, property is active, and we have to control it to know that job was uh, that coroutine was cancelled. Okay, how works uh, changing the context? That's just uh, changing the threads. Uh, we have we have coroutine launched on the UI thread, and just call the uh, with context inside of it. And everything what what is uh, inside this uh, with context will be launched on the background thread, and everything beside of that will work in the main thread. Uh, okay, um, with this we can uh, of course use uh, sequential uh, uh, code, just like uh, here. Uh, here we have example of how to load uh, data from two sources uh, sequentially. Um, it will load data from the first source, then wait for the uh, results, uh, then it will load data for the uh, second source, wait for the results, compute uh, results and uh, show the content. So everything uh, here are just normal sequential code that we write every day. Okay, but what if we want to have uh, asynchronous call? Uh, we can use async uh, coroutine builder. We pass the common pool, and everything inside of that uh, is uh, called in. Uh, it's, it happens in uh, background thread uh, before uh, getting the value from the background thread. We can make any computation, and when we call uh, response data wait, uh, it will uh, wait for the result, or it will take result if it's already uh, for us. Uh, what we have uh, here is also something tricky. Next tricky uh, thing um, in coroutine. Uh, we, when we want to cancel uh, uh, coroutines, uh, coroutines inside of it, uh, it's uh, coroutines inside of it. Uh, it will still work because it don't know that the parent coroutine is cancelled. Uh, so uh, there is a way to avoid it. We have to pass coroutine context uh, of the parent, and now the uh, child coroutine will know that uh, it have to uh, think about the parent and check if the parent is still active. Okay, but before we had a sequential way of uh, loading data. This is uh, parallel uh, uh, loading data. It will uh, launch uh, two, uh, two coroutines uh, parallel and it will load data. It's, uh, we don't know which one it will uh, end uh, earlier. Uh, it will, uh, on when we have this uh, line where we uh, have await, we'll, this is the 
place where um, uh, the main coroutine launched on the UI thread will wait for uh, mm, for the results from the uh, two sources data. Okay, now it's time for the more complex examples. Uh, this is uh, MVP presenter uh, methods, and that's that we see in uh, a lot of uh, projects. This is uh, written in Eric Java. It uh, gets some data from API. Uh, it uh, subscribes on scheduler thread. It observes what's uh, on main thread, and uh, we have callbacks for on next on error how it would like uh, how it would w uh, look in coroutine world just like that we launch we have to launch uh, coroutine because only inside of coroutine we can call suspend function uh, then we can um, uh, change the threads for example uh, here we will uh, use uh, we change the threads this uh, will call sequentially so on with context will wait uh, until the uh, it, no, it will return deferred object and uh, then we have uh, uh, await for this res uh, response of data and we have here a try catch block because uh, in coroutine words we don't have uh, on error uh, callback we just work with uh, Errors, typically like in sequential code, just by using try and try catch. Okay, uh, someone can ask about uh, operators. In Rex Java have a lot of uh, great operators. Here we have everything from cotton collections like math filter. Uh, it's uh, it was in cotton before, and we use it uh, with working with collections. And uh, of course, uh, uh, coroutines provide some more uh, operators. For example, uh, to handle with timeout, just we have to start. Uh, we just do have to call a uh, uh, method with timeout or, or null. That will it takes uh, three parameters: how much we want to wait, the unit of we want to wait, and the, sec the third. Parameter is the suspend function. That uh, that this function know uh, that after some time it have to cancel that uh, that coroutine. Uh, in this example, it will return a null after two seconds. But uh, there is also version of this method where it's call what it return a timeout exception. Uh, what uh, have what else have uh, coroutine is that you can very easily uh, write own operator. It's uh, much easier than in X Java because you writing in sequential way like in every code. Here is the example where uh, of uh, retry. retry. Um, we here we uh, try f five times. Uh, where we wait uh, 15 seconds uh, for the block result. If not, it will uh, throw time of cancellation exception. And uh, last time it we will we call this suspend block uh, without without any timeout. Okay, the next uh, next. Uh, Big thing uh, in uh, coroutine uh, are channels. Channels. Uh, this is definitely something that you uh, should uh, learn more. But here are here is only uh, basic knowledge. Uh, channels are something like hot observables in Eric's world. Mm, we can think about it, but it's uh, much much simpler. It can it's uh, observe it's it the channel have buffer default is uh, one. As you see uh, in the codes, I uh, showed uh, how to start channel with uh, some capacity. Here is 
one. If I if I would uh, write this without this one, it still would have uh, capacity one. And I have uh, showed the execution order. order. Uh, if the buffer is full, it will wait. Uh, it, it will suspend this uh, coroutine until uh, the buffer will, will be empty. Um, and then, well, someone receive uh, from the channel, it will return. Uh, it will send another. Uh, it will send another number. In coroutines, unfortunately, we don't have anything uh, like called observables in from Rx Java world. Uh, in the Kotlin GitHub, this is the uh, second one top issue <laughs> with uh, a lot of uh, comments. Uh, there is a way to uh, imitate this uh, called observable. You can use sequences. This is uh, a lazy collections in Kotlin, but definitely this is not uh, the API that we want to have called observables. Channels have uh, two childs, uh, produce and actor. This is, this, it works uh, same as normal channel with uh, one different produce. When we have producer, uh, produce can send uh, data to the channel only, you can say it only that uh, data uh, inside of the producer. And uh, when, with the actor, it can receive data only in, uh, uh, inside of actor. OK. Will be the next step for XJava developers. Will Coroutine can uh, be the next step for XJava de developers? It, was, it is a very hard question. Uh, I can't can't answer just like that. Maybe we should ask someone uh, someone smarter. Jake, what do you think? <laughs> Jake Wharton. Who knows? Coroutines compete with Java, not Rx. Coroutines compete with threads, not executor, not Rx, uh, and executors, not Rx. Mm. You have right. The uh, coroutines are more low-level API. Uh, than Eric's Java, but still this possibility of writing sequential code is uh, quite tempting. Uh, it's, uh, mm, it's, it's very, very tempting to write so simply code without any callbacks, without these uh, streams. So this is uh, for everybody have to think about do you kn do, do he wants uh, to write in stream way or sequential way? Coroutines are much faster and uh, much more uh, memory efficient than uh, um, Rx Java, but it creates uh, less objects. Uh, in my opinion, it's perfectly replacement for Rx Java uh, objects like uh, single computable maybe. Unfortunately, uh, channels are far, far worse than uh, uh, their, than observables and can't replace them. Uh, Rx Java wins everywhere where you need to deal with real stream, but Coroutine wi wins everywhere when we want to write Kotlin native. Kotlin native is uh, uh, is a thing that we can write one code and uh, which will be executed. Uh, on uh, more platform, Androids, uh, on the web, and even on the iOS, but still they're working on it. So maybe we should have Eric's API with Coroutine. Jake, what do you think? <laughs> Jake Wharton, I doubt the masses will adopt the Coroutine APIs directly. I think we'll see high level abstraction built on the top of them, similar to Eric's being high level abstraction on the observer pattern which get adopted. I think that we have right. It's nice that uh, we have uh, <laughs> same opinion about that. OK, uh, where and what uh, you have to learn about uh, Coroutine more. Uh, there is uh, uh, Coroutine uh, GitHub where with Coroutine uh, Coroutin Coroutines, the first one. This is the basics of uh, Coroutine in uh, language. 
this is very, very low level basics. And everything what you f have seen here, it's, uh, there is not there. There's the, all this code in builders. Builders, you have to use uh, uh, Kotlin, Kotlin X Kotlin um, library, that's a support library. And this, uh, that provides more libraries for uh, other things. For example, uh, common dispatchers for uh, for uh, single uh, with, to work for UI with uh, single thread. For example, for Android, Spring, JavaFX. Uh, it has also uh, support for reactive libra libraries like Eric's Java, uh, and we can you can uh, convert Eric's uh, Eric's and uh, Cortin, and they can work uh, together. You have uh, also support for uh, all future-based libraries like Computer Fluid in JDK 8. Uh, there is also a library for Kotlin JS and Kotlin Native. If you want to know more, you should you have to uh, listen uh, talks about core teams by uh, Roman and Zalio and Zal Arzarov, uh, from JetBrains from uh, latest uh, Kotlin Conf. Hey, thank you very much. Do you have any questions? You can find me on Twitter. Um, that's all.